حضرت عاصم بن ثابت حضرت رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ واز اے کمپینین آف دی ہولی پروفٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم His uh, father was Sabit bin Qais and the mother, mother was Shamus. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abdullah bin Jahash and himself uh, and this companion uh, established the brotherhood at the at time of Uhud, the Battle of Uhud. Uh, suddenly the attack of the non-believers because of that The, the Muslims were dispersed and uh, scattered. Hadrat Asim, uh, he along with the Holy Prophet Sallallahu he stood firm there <coughs> and uh, and he had done the initiation at his hand to die for the cause of Islam and uh, he related to uh, the tribe Aus He, he participated in jang e badr the battle of badr as well the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the day of badr he asked the companions that uh, when you will confront the enemies then how would you fight with them hazrat tasim said that o prophet of allah when some nation will come so close that my arrows can reach them then we will throw the arrows and when they come even closer that our stones can reach them that we will stone them and uh, put throw stones on them and then he took picked up three stones and uh, two in one hand and one in the other and they say when they will come so close to us that our spears can reach them then we will fight uh, with the spears against them and uh, and then with the swords when the spears are not there then we will fight with stone at that the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that this is the way to fight the battle and uh, and he said that uh, whosoever is going to fight against the enemy then he should follow the style of hazrat asim in those days uh, these uh, you know spears and swords the, and arrows these were the things with which people used to fight and this was the method of the a war and even sometimes stones were used and not like the present time that uh, they sometimes kill the innocent ladies and uh, people a non muslim has written a book the uh, regarding the battles fought by the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that you uh, you blame the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he fought certain battles but in his battles only few people or maybe a thousand people might have died and you who declare yourself very very well advanced and very very loving to man- mankind so in in just one battle he men even 7 million people they got killed there and majority of them they were ordinary citizens but nowadays unfortunately the muslims they are seeking help from these people and indiscriminately they are killing the muslims instead of uh, they should follow this me- method that when the enemy attacks when the enemy comes closer and there are various ways of fighting against them they themselves are going to attack them and they are killing the muslims in one narration it is mentioned that hazrat ali رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ on the day of Uhud with his sword he came back which because of the excessive use had bent and Hadrat Ali told Hadrat Fatma that you keep the sword this has used I have used it extensively in the battlefield and the Holy Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم said the Holy Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم heard and he said that if you have used the sword very efficiently so then sohal bin udaif and dujana bin ada and hasr bin sabit they have also done very wonderful job with the sword in one narration it is mentioned that the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
from the captives of the Badr, Abu Ghazza, Amr bin Abdullah, he was a poet, and uh, as a matter of favor, they were all released because he said that, O oh Muhammad, I have got five uh, daughters, and there is no one uh, beside me to look after them. So, uh, on for their sake, please release me as charity. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu released him. At that, he Abu Azza said that I make a full promise with you that neither I will fight against you nor I will help anybody to fight against you. On, on that, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu sent him back without any payment. When the Quraysh, they, went, uh, they were just about to leave for Awhad, Safwan bin Umayyah came and he said, They asked him that the, you also come along with me. But he said that I have made a firm promise with the Holy Prophet that I am not going to fight against you, nor I will help anybody to fight against you. He has just given me the favor, and this favor has not been shown to anybody else beside me. So Fan, he gave him the guarantee that if he was killed, then his daughters, he would take them as uh, uh, his own daughters and he, if he lives on then plenty of uh, wealth will be given that will be exclusively for your family. And he said that, that don't worry that if you are killed in the battle, if you help us and uh, if you are killed, then I will treat your daughters as my daughters and if you survive then I will give you a lot of money. On that Abu Azza, he went out to call the people. He he not only he participated, but he also uh, in, in get together other people of the other tribes to fight against the Holy Prophet. And then, and then he went out uh, along with Quraysh for the battle of uh, uh, Badr. And after that, uh, apart from that, from Quraysh, no one else was uh, taken as prisoner. And when he was caught, then he asked that you have made a promise. He said, O oh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have just come out, out of compulsion. I have quarters. So please, uh, uh, again he repeated the same thing that I have got daughters. Please do me a favor. And, uh, uh, re uh, and for that purpose, uh, uh, release me. At that, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that uh, what happened to your promise which you made with me? No, nef never, not this time. By Allah, you will not be able to say in, in, in Mecca that uh, I have deceived the Holy Prophet twice. According to another narration, the Holy Prophet ﷺ said that certain a, a, a moment is not uh, a, a stung from one hole twice. And then he said to Asim, asked uh, that uh, you kill him. Asim went ahead and he, his uh, head was chopped. So after such uh, injustice and atrocity and uh, breaking the co co promise, the punishment that is given, even then, the Holy Prophet Wasallam, the people who criticize him, they say that God, for, God forbid he was very aggressive. And uh, the, uh, the politician of Holland, Wilder, he is attacking on the character of the Holy Prophet Wasallam these days. If in this world, in, in one's own country, they can show the examples of such forgiveness. So then they will realize that uh, uh, then it's, uh, it can be justified, but such examples cannot be shown. Vakya in the Riji incident and uh, the mention of Father Tasim. Hadrat Mirza Bashir Sahib has mentioned this in book Sirat Khatmun Nabiyin. He writes that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and in fourth year of Hijrah, a party of ten people were sent there and Asim bin Sabit was appointed as Amir and he was commanded that he should go secretly close to Mecca and find out the conditions and the, the details of Mecca and their planning and all those things and inform him accordingly. But this party has not left yet that uh, 
the from certain tribes uh, some people came and they mentioned that uh, there are a lot of people in our tribes who are ready to accept islam the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam should send some people along with us you know, who would convert them to islam and give us the teaching of islam the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, finding out their desire he was very happy to know that and the same party which was uh, uh, planned to get the information they were sent to the, along with these people but uh, as it happened later on that these people were liars and banu lahyan at the incitement of that they came to medina and who uh, sufyan bin khalid their leader to get the revenge of his uh, killing they had planned this thing that in this way the muslims should come out of medina and they should be attacked and killed and banu lahyan as a result of this service uh, for the certain people they had appointed several camels to be given as reward when these people the traitors when they were between asfan and mecca and then they sent the message to banu lahyan that the muslims are coming with us so you come to kill them and banu lahyan uh, 200 youngsters of that tribe there was 100 were using the arrows they stood against the muslims and muqam raji that point which is known as raji they confronted the muslim and the did and 10 people were there and how could they get escaped from there so so these companions they got ready went on to a hill top and according to the non believers there was no harm in deceiving and they said that you come down uh, from the top of the mountain and we promise that we are not going to kill you asim replied that we don't believe in your promises and uh, if we cannot uh, at your authority we can uh, cannot accept that and then he announced uh, facing his face to allah to above and say allah uh, uh, please uh, let the holy prophet know about this condition hadrat asim and his companions they confronted and uh, finally i mean after this battle they were they embraced martyrdom now he writes uh, more that uh, regarding this incident of raji this narration is also there when the leader of the crash they came to know that those people those who have been martyred and uh, killed in raji uh, among them asim bin sabit was also there uh, because he has killed a great leader so therefore they sent special people to raji and those people were instructed that they should bring the head or some part of the body of asim along with them so that the people could feel satisfied and their passion of revenge could be satisfied to some degree and in another narration it is mentioned that the person who killed asim his mother surafa bin tasad she vowed that the, the she would drink the some uh, drink in the in the skull of that person who is the killing his son and when these people reached there they saw that uh, uh, there were there were a uh, lot of bees and uh, uh, flies there and they were coming from the head of uh, asim and these people that uh, these uh, flies should uh, fly away but uh, they could not succeed and uh, these people they came back without any success and after that soon soon there was a, a very heavy rain and uh, the whole body was flown uh, driven away from that uh, and uh, and then they promised that these people they are not going to anything uh, with set up, setting up a partners with allah almighty when hazrat umar <coughs> came to know about this incident then he said that uh, allah almighty uh, takes care of the and uh, protects uh, the feelings of the uh, of the people and after the death even the promise of asim was fulfilled and he was protected from the harm which they could give to uh, asim and uh, he hadrat asim radhiyallahu uh, ta'ala anhu is known as uh, hamiyud dabar that he was protected from 
the bees and the flies he was the one and uh, even after the death allah almighty protected his body from the attack of the bees and flies and uh, the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for month long in the prayer fajr prayer and uh, that he uh, prayed against these two tribes and in another narration it is mentioned there hazrat asim when confronting the enemy he was throwing the arrow and he was reciting at this some time al maut halqun wa la hayat that the meaning of this is that uh, death is imminent and uh, and whatever allah almighty decides for a person that is going to be uh, revealed and uh, a person has to accept that decree of allah when the arrows finished then he started with spear when that was broken then he took the sword and in the fight he uh, surrendered his life and another companion hazrat sahal bin bil hunaf ansari hunaf was his father bint hin bin tarafe was the mother there were two uh, brothers abdullah and noman and his is uh, son is asad and usman and saad adra sahal the progeny of that in is in medina and baghdad had the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and between hazrat ali him and hazrat ali in the point, uh, brotherhood was established in the battle of badr uh, uh, and he he participated in all the battles except one hazrat sahal bin hunaf uh, he was a very great uh, uh, prof, uh, um, companion but financially he was very tight uh, ibn uyana who hazrat sahal narrates that uh, i heard somebody say that the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from the wealth of banu nazir hazur says that uh, i heard zohri say that the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from the wealth of banu nazir to this suhail bin hanif and abu dujana from among the ansar there was no other uh, part was given to share was given to them hazrat ibn saad says that the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam after the migration to medina uh, for 3 days and nights hazrat ali stayed there in mecca and all the trust which the uh, deposits which were in, given to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he returned it back then hazrat ali radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu then he uh, followed him and uh, met him on the way and hazrat kalsum bil hilm uh, along with that uh, he stayed there and once also he stayed in quba for some time he narrates that in quba there was a muslim lady who, who did not have uh, any husband the father was uh, the husband was no longer there and somebody knocks at his door once one night and the lady comes out and the person gives him something and she takes it and rizillah taala no says hazrat ali he he, uh, he doubted this thing that uh, oh midun of allah that who is this man who knocks at your door and when uh, you come to the door he gives something I don't know what is that thing which is given to you but you are a muslim lady and you don't have your husband alive so this day coming out uh, um, out uh, in night and to speak to a unrelated person this does not seem na- nice see she said this, this is sahal bin hunaf he knows that i am all alone and there is no one related to me when the evening is there so so he the from the people his people and his rel- uh, his uh, and then he breaks the idols and bring those pieces so that i can burn them out and he said uh, hadrat hadrat ali uh, mentioned this incident at the time of uh, the death of hadrat sahal that among the people 
in order to eliminate the uh, um, shirk from his own people he he used to do like that hazrat sahal bin hunaif he, he was from among those noble prophets who on the day of uhud they remained steadfast and uh, on that day they they vowed at the hand of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to lay down their lives and uh, the he hazrat sahal was uh, in front of the holy prophet as a shield and when there was intense uh, fighting and attack and the muslim had to move away so he threw, threw the arrow from the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that uh, give uh, arrows to sahal because uh, it is uh, something very easy for him to throw the arrows to the enemies it is said that uh, uh, he there was a very experienced uh, person using the spear and his uh, uh, spear would uh, reach such a distance which other people cannot do and during the siege of uh, banu uh, the for the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there was a tent pitched for him the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent uh, uh, through an uh, um, uh, uh, spear and that reached to that tent and the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked the companions that uh, the place of this tent should be changed and after that hazrat ali he went in after searching for that person and uh, and who was just going out to kill a chief of some tribe hazrat ali found the moment and killed him there and his head was presented to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and all the people along with him they ran away and uh, in order to kill these people the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, ten people were sent under the leadership of hazrat ali a group was sent and they followed these people and they killed them because they were they were sitting in ambush to kill the other people and during this in this group uh, hazrat abu dujana and her brother sahal bin hunaif were also among those ten people there was no day when a, which was spent peacefully in those days every time the enemy was sitting in ambush for the attack and when he was killed so then this sort of treatment should have been meted out to these people the holy prophet at the victory of khaybar wadi ul qura that valley he stayed there when the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his uh, people they came to this valley and settled there then the jews were already prepared well prepared for the fight they 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 welcomed with the uh, arrow, arrows uh, with the attack of arrows and uh, one slave of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he uh, he was uh, he was uh, taking down the saddle from the his mount and one arrow uh, hit him and he died the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam immediately asked for uh, line up to fight and his uh, flag was given to one and khubab bin munzar was given one and the other one was sahal bin hunaif the other was given to him and the third ibad bin bishr the third one was given to them so in this uh, as a result of the fight the whole uh, area was uh, won by the muslims and the victory was there and allah almighty also gave them lot of uh, spoils of war the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam stayed there for four days and he distributed these spoils of war among the companions the gardens and the land was given to the jewish people despite having a victory over these people these uh, things were uh, but there was an a, a ruler appointed over the jews so this is uh, another example of good treatment with the uh, enemies they they continue to own the property and uh, a certain tax was taken according to the practice in those days if uh, in those days if all these uh, property was captured there was no harm in it there was no objection but the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was very uh, uh, kind uh, towards these people hazrat mirza bashir ahmed sam say when the syria was uh, Uh, one in his book uh, uh, sirat khatam an nabiyin when the victory of syria was there and the christian population they came under the control of muslims so one day when the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his companion sahal bin hunaif and kas bin saad 
in in a place in Kadsia they were sitting there and uh, the dead body of a Christian passed by both of them they stood up in honor some Muslim the Holy Prophet who was not in the company of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu and was unaware of these manners which Islam teaches he was very much surprised and surprisingly he asked that Suha asked Suhail that this is the person who has who is over under control and he's a Christian and he said replied that yes we know but the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this was his way that whenever he saw the a dead body of non-Muslims, he used to stand up as honor. And he would say that uh, are they, were, they were not given the life by God. So this is the respect of humanity. And uh, this is the way of uh, eliminating the rancor between religions. And the foundation of that was laid by the Holy Prophet Wasallam, And the same noble example was followed by his companions. Abu Wail narrates that we were in Safin. Sahal bin Hunaf stood up and he said, that, oh people, you consider yourself in the wrong because in, in the case of Hudabiya, we were there with the Holy Prophet Wasallam. If we had an opportunity of fighting, then we would have gone for that. Amr bin Khattab came in the meantime and he said that, uh, and he mentioning this incident of Hudabiya, and he said that, are we not right and the non-believers are wrong? He said, yes, the Holy Prophet Wasallam said. And uh, and uh, is it not that our people who die, they are paradise and their people, they go into hell? He said, yes, the Holy Prophet said. So then why should we accept this disgrace that you are getting into this uh, uh, pact of Udabiya? And, uh, and uh, that Allah Almighty is going to finally decide between us. The Holy Prophet said that, O oh, son of Khattab, Allah Almighty, I am the Prophet of Allah. Allah Almighty will not perish me. Let me perish. And... Uh, and then he went to Hadrat Abu Bakr and said the same thing which he had earlier mentioned to the Holy Prophet. Hadrat Abu Bakr said, he is the Prophet of Allah and Allah Almighty will not let him perish. And it is written there, it is written in Bukhari that Surah Fatha was revealed and the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and towards the, the uh, he recited the whole till the end to the Hadrat Umar and he said, is it this victory? He said, yes, this is the victory. Sadiyad uh, Waliullah Shah Sahib, in the commentaries, he says, Safin is Iraq and Sham, in between the, these countries where Hadrat Ali and Muawiyah, they confronted one another. And when the people of Muawiyah realized that they are going to be defeated, then they raised uh, the Holy Quran on their uh, spears. And then they said that according to the Holy Quran, the decision should be taken and the war, uh, war stopped. And from the early, they agreed to uh, stop the war. And some people, Hadrat Sahal was on behalf of Hadrat Ali. Hadrat Sahal bin Hunaf, he told them that that you don't consider your opinion to be right. Because before that, on the time of... Uh, Udabi Hadrat Umar was also mistaken. So then finally the, it appeared that uh, the steadfastness of the Holy Prophet and uh, the uh, keeping the promise that was blessed by Allah. And he said, and uh, he, Hadrat Sahal said that the people whom they considered to be as weakness and disgrace, but Allah Almighty made it the source of power and respect. And the Holy Prophet وسلم, in each and everything he always looked after the fulfillment of the promise. Uh, although uh, there was a deception there and uh, and th those uh, uh, the results were not there, but Mumin should also have a good f feeling and good uh, thinking. And uh, whatever is uh, taken, decision is taken in the, uh, in the uh, in guidance of Allah Almighty, that is the respect of the Mumin and Mumin should always do like that. There Allah Almighty told the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioning that Hadrat Sahal said that uh, if the treaty is being uh, formulated so then uh, it is a discussion of ceasefire so we should uh, considering the example of Hudabiyah we should make a truce there and Hadrat Sahal uh, narrates that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam addressing me he said that she, 
you are my uh, messenger to Meccans and convey my salam to these people and say to them that the Holy Prophet uh, asks you to do three things and don't swear in the name of your forefathers. This is forbidden in Islam. And when you go for the toilet, then you don't face or turn your back towards Qibla. And uh, the third point of advice was that don't uh, clean yourself with the, uh, the bones or uh, thing because there is a wisdom there. There are so many bacteria and that can uh, nowadays uh, tissue and paper is available. But in those days in jungle, the stones and the bones were used and uh, he, forbid it, uh, he forbid the people to do that. As it has been before mentioned before, Hadrat Ali, uh, that uh, Hadrat uh, Asim bin Sabit and Sahal bin Hunaf regarding uh, these two, the Holy Prophet وسلم, that these uh, their swords have uh, shown wonders today. When Hadrat Ali, Rasulullah Taala uh, he was uh, uh, was done the bath was done at his hand. Then these uh, uh, then Hadrat Sahal were along with him, and when Hadrat Ali went for Basra. So then he appointed Hazrat Sahal as his, uh, uh, you know, representative back, and uh, Hazrat uh, Ali appointed him the ruler of uh, uh, one area, and uh, Hazrat Ali sent uh, somebody else, and Ali Faris. They were very happy with that, and uh, they paid the due, and uh, and it was not that because he was doing something wrong, but uh, this is the temperament of various tribes. And uh, all of the, the people, they have their uh, special attributes. Hadrat Ayad was uh, uh, able to capture these people in a better way. And also later on, the truce was there and the uh, and dues were received from them. Hadrat Sahal, his death, uh, he, on the way back after victory of Safin, and Hadrat Ali led his Janaza prayer. Hadrat Hanesh bin Motar says, that when Hadrat Sahal bin uh, Unaf died, then Hadrat Ali, Rasulullah Taala Anho, he came to open to lead his prayer. Hadrat Ali, uh, he uh, uh, pronounced Allah for six times. Some people disliked it. At that, Hadrat Ali told them. He told the people that Hadrat Sahal is a, a, a companion of the Badr, participated in Badr, when his uh, dead. Janaza arrived at Jawana. Then, along with some other people, we met them. And we went to Hadrat Ali that, O oh, Amirul Mu'mineen, uh, we could not join the uh, prayer of uh, Hadrat Sahal. Then, Hadrat Ali permitted them to offer the Namaz Janaza for Sahal again. And, uh, and then, uh, these people, they offered the Janaza prayer for him. And the third, uh, uh, Hadrat Jabbar bin. Sakhal. In Bayt Uqba Saniya, the second one he participated, and Hazrat Jabbar and Mikdar bin Amar, they were in the brotherhood was created in between them at the time of Badr. His age was 32. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He, he, he used to send him to assess the value of the dates and uh, he died in the uh, during the period of Hadrat Usman at the time of uh, death he was 62 Hadrat Jabbar Khazwa uh, Khandak and all the expeditions he was always along with the Holy Prophet Hadrat Jabbar bin Sakhar uh, says he says that uh, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu said that uh, when he was heading towards Mecca that who is uh, going to the place Asaya and uh, and then he would uh, take care of the well over there and then he will fill the water into that one. So this was the 
the narrator said that this was a point where the Holy Prophet ﷺ sent us. And Hazrat Jabbar says that I stood there and uh, I, I said that I am going to do the service. Hazur said, yes, you go. So he reached that place and he repaired the well and then filled it with water. And then I was overcome by sleep and I slept over there. And I was not waken up. And 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 only that person woke me up because uh, he had lost his uh, uh, she camel because she camel was running fast to that well and he was stopping that and and then he said the tow owner of the this uh, well you uh, take care of that and uh, uh, and then the holy prophet sallallahu was there and uh, and then the holy prophet sallallahu uh, he asked his mount to sit by that side and then and then you take a, a pot and uh, come with me and I followed him. The Holy Prophet ﷺ performed the wuzu. I also performed wuzu along with the Holy Prophet. And then he stood for prayer and I stood on his left side. Uh, and the very first thing which he did was to perform the Holy Prophet ﷺ, the first performed the wuzu and then stood to offer the nava. When I stood on the left side, the Holy Prophet ﷺ took my hand and um, brought me to his right side. So uh, during the nafal, that he, he thought that he should join in nafal. He stood on the left side, but the Holy Prophet ﷺ by his hand took him to the and brought him to the right. When the prayer in congregation in between the two people, then the second person should be on the right of the Imam. So we offered the prayer and we were just uh, during the course of the prayer, then other people also came and joined us. In the, on the day of Badr, the Holy Prophet ﷺ prayed, Allahumma kfini, that Umayy Nofal, Nofal bin Khalid, he was a leader of the idolaters of Mecca, that that should be enough for me. Hazrat Jabbar bin Sakhar, he, he, he had taken him as a slave, and Hazrat Ali came and killed him. And then uh, the, he asked the Holy Prophet Sallallahu that do you know, anybody knows about Nafal? Hadrat Ali said that I have already killed him. At that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu prayed that all praise belongs to Allah who has accepted my prayer. So he was a very staunch uh, uh, enemy and uh, Allah Almighty he prayed uh, in this regard to Allah and that was fulfilled. And in according to one narration, when the Holy Prophet Sallallahu migrated to Medina, that everybody wished very much that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu should stay at his house. There are various references, but the Holy Prophet Sallallahu said that wherever my Shikamal is going to sit, I will stay uh, in the nearest place. And when the Shikamal was walking through the lanes, and everybody was saying that, O Prophet of Allah, please come to our house. But he will always say that let the she camel walk. And she has been commanded that uh, that he, she will sit when Allah's command is there. So finally, the she camel came right at the entrance of the Masjid al Nabi and uh, she sat over there. And uh, when the, she was settled, then the Holy Prophet Wasallam had the revelation at that time so he was still on the back of the camel and uh, then she st uh, she stood up and then uh, the holy prophet said uh, let him let her go free and again uh, sat for the second time and put her neck on the ground hadrat jabbar bin sakhar uh, on this hope that uh, the uh, she camel would stand in the uh, area of banu sahal um, and uh, and the holy prophet sallam got off the back and said that this is the place where we are going to stay. And he recited this one, Vakurrabbe Anzilni Munzala Sidkin Munzala Mubarakan Vanta Khairul Munzaleen Munzala Munzala Mubarakan Vanta Khairul Munzaleen That, uh, oh my Allah, you enable me to get off at a right place and you are the one who leads the people to the right place.
and then the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that who is nearest hazrat abu ayub ansari said that oh, oh prophet of allah this is my house nearest this is the ha- door of the house and uh, we have put your saddle inside he said yes and uh, prepare the place where we have to take some rest and they prepared their room and the place where he had shas bin kas was an old person and he was very staunch non believer and he had great enmity against uh, uh, muslims and he happened to see pass by some muslims who were talking and when he looked at uh, their mutual love and uh, peacefulness of these people that they are sitting and talking to one another very happily lovingly and kindly so uh, which they had acquired after the period of ignorance uh, so this was a very good atmosphere uh, before that they were a- enemy to one another but uh, because of islam they became very friends the, the truth was their mutual love and affection was there so they were able to show this uh, atmosphere so he, he became very angry this person because when they became muslims so then allah almighty has brought their hearts together shas bin kas said that uh, the leader of banu kala are sitting here and unless their uh, uh, leaders are here we cannot be fully satisfied and uh, how how is it possible that uh, a hatred should turn into love and uh, this uh, uh, he appointed someone who was with him that you go and sit with these people and uh, they mention the of the jange boss the war of boss and uh, then uh, also mention those uh, uh, verses which they used to say against one another so he did the same and one and those verses which were recited by one tribe against uh, and some of the people and uh, this uh, started a sort of fire in their hearts by looking by listening to those uh, verses which was said during the period of ignorance and the people of the other tribe that uh, uh, our poet said on the same day he said in reply this one and this and then the people from the first uh, tribe he said that our poet said like that so all of them uh, there was a time there was sitting very lovingly and kindly talking to one another because of this uh, uh, incident they started fighting between them and starting boasting upon other people and uh, until there was two people khaz there were two people uh, they f- uh, fought uh, w- with one another and one of them said that uh, if you say that we can start the war right now and uh, this came to this point and both the groups they were deciding about the place of fighting and they used to claim like they used to make at the time of ignorance the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam got the news so he came to aus and khazraj he came the holy prophet and there was uh, muhajiri immigrants were as along with him the holy prophet said that oh community of believers have the fear of allah allah they have the fear of allah almighty so are you making the claims like the people when you are not muslims while i am with you allah almighty has guided you to islam and has given you the honor because of islam and all the aspects of uh, jahiliyat ignorance has gone away so allah almighty has put uh, love and affection in your hearts are you going to back go back to the disbelief the state of that the people realize the companions realized that this was a trial this was a trick so they immediately threw their weapon and started weeping and also in khazraj the people they started embracing one another and the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they submitted along with him and uh, expressed their obedience <coughs> allah almighty has uh, uh, extinguished the fire bit in their hearts and this was mentioned in the holy quran in one verse they say they they say they were said that o oh, people of the book why do you deny the verses of allah the signs of allah when allah almighty is witness and you do crime and o oh, people of the book the one who has believed 
why do you stop him from the way of allah and you want to create crookedness in it while you know the reality allah almighty is not unaware of what you do hadrat aws bin kaziya and jaban jabar bin sakhar and their companions and they demonstrated this state of like they used to do in ignorance and this verse this instruction was revealed about uh, about them that ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu in tutiyu fariqan min alladhina min alkita yaruddukum ba'da imanikum kafirin fa kayfa takfuruna wa antum tutla alaykum ayatullah wa fikum rasulu wa man yatasim billah faqad hudiya ila sirat mustaqim that o ye people those who have believed if you those people who have been given the book if you follow any one of them so then be, after you have believed they will turn you back to the disbelief and how can you deny when uh, the verses of the allah were recited to you and the prophet was uh, of allah was uh, among you and the one who hold fast allah they are certainly guided to the right path to the straight path so anyway so this was the condition Yeah, this was the condition of the companions that uh, sometimes they were deceived in by Satan but when they were made to realize then the Holy Prophet Sallallahu told them that why do you go back to the state of ignorance they were felt very sorry and they came to truth and uh, love and affection was demonstrated and showed uh, again, uh, shown at that very time so these are the examples so nowadays those on petty issues uh, sometime they in they are they suffer from selfish ego there is a re- good recipe for them in this if they were bloodthirsty those people and the people who used to fight they became the brothers uh, to one another so now the people who are born in the same community they, they recite the same kalima why can't they leave their false ego and the the unpleasant situation continues for several years some youngsters write to me that uh, the misunderstanding and the enmity between our uh, tribes uh, it is very difficult to uh, establish our relationship with them and have the marriages in that so these uh, marriages are impossible because of that because of the some older people uh, and uh, they should uh, take uh, wisdom and show wisdom and this teaching which allah almighty has given regarding love and affection and unity and oneness and allah almighty has made them one nation we have to live as a one nation and the false egos we should not uh, revert back to that allah almighty give wisdom to all the people one narration is there that uh, when hazrat umar uh, expelled the jews from khaybar then jabar bin sakhar and yazid bin they came, they went for khaybar and both these people so they they used to go to estimate about the wealth of the product and according to the understanding they used to put the share for all that in the place of qura where their share was given to uh, to the parties then one portion was given to hazrat jabbar bin sakhar so these were the some statements uh, narrations of the companions allah almighty continue to exalt their station